Uh, I'm Davide Castiglione. As you can guess from my name and surname, I'm not from here, I'm Italian. Um, but I made Vilnius my second, if not first home now, because I moved here uh, seven years ago now in 2016. Uh, because I found a job at Vilnius University where I still teach and where I teach mostly linguistics but also poetry and um, creative writing. I was doing a PhD in Nottingham, in UK and I, um, I just wanted a, a change, a you know, fresh challenge as they say. So I always felt like a special connection with Eastern uh, European countries um, I had dear friends from Bulgaria in UK. I was studying Hungarian, though I totally forgot it. So for some reasons, I thought, okay, let's try to apply to several places, like in Eastern Europe, but also in Scandinavia. And I was lucky with Vilnius. For me, it was really like a renewal, like something new, because I came from a period that was kind of, I mean, Nothing too bad, but kind of heavy for me anyway. Um, end of PhD in a country where I didn't feel welcome for some reason, like in UK, or at least in that specific city, because I don't want to generalize. And here, actually, this place is very significant to me, not only because it's Venus, but because it's Ujupis more specifically. And the first time I came here uh, was back in May 2016 for a few days to check out the cities and meet my future colleagues and I was uh, staying at uh, a downtown forest uh, hotel hostel that's really nearby and as soon as I saw the Vilnelle people relaxing that really made a big impression on me to the point that they even wrote a poem dedicated to Ujupis and uh, yeah and after seven years I really liked being here and Vilnius always surprises me so I mostly almost exclusively write uh, poetry and essays, reviews, criticism or academic articles. I only write in Italian because um, that's my effective language. <laughs> um, it doesn't come to me naturally writing in English. I tried once but it was sort of a, an, an experiment or something. Though I'm trying to self-translate myself into English, which is a good practice, but Original writing only happens in Italian. So what I talk about in my poetry, like, well, hard to sum up, but um, mostly about loneliness and distance and social relationships uh, and places. So I think I have very much a phenomenological understanding of writing, simply not because I have that much reading in phenomenology, but when I read a few essays or uh, philosophers, I said, okay, that's what I have been doing all along without knowing it, basically measuring um, your, how you fit in places, how you fit with others, how you fit your, with yourself. So these are, these are the topics. There is a sentence that I really liked that um, uh, an Italian poet and intellectual, Franco Fortini, said, um, to turn into consciousness as much, as, as much experience as possible. And this is what I'm trying to do. I know that experiences may be daily and banal mostly, especially like in, you know, I, my life is, I think, very average. But I think it also depends the, 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 the depths with which you try to look at that events and uh, the skills, um, the, the forms, the, the, the technical uh, baggage that you have with which you can sort of translate that into something which is also impactful. Having said that, of course, the, the aim and the hope is to try to expand the range uh, as, you know, um, as much as I can. So going from the lyrical uh, out to the social. So like in uh, poems that I've written recently, reasoning about social inequality but for instance, but not in the sense that I want to write a poem that is propaganda-like. I really hate <laughs> poems that are thematic based, you know, the poems that, oh, it's about the environment, so you will get invited to that festival, or I write about this or that, because it's too easily turned into a label. So simply like I observe in my life certain things that hit my attention, some of which are you know, also power relations. 
so I've been writing about them traumatizing like little dramas and actually the narrative is there I said I don't write fiction but actually I do write fiction but condensed and in lines because we know that also poetry is narrative but usually it has a single event so it's like a, a fable or a par parable so it belongs to genres that are a bit less um, out there I mean they are really deep inside us but they're not really advertise that much because they are remnant from religion maybe they're remnant from um, other from from wisdom you know from this very old-fashioned word one of the books I've read is this one I'm holding it was a present of a, a few students of mine so an anthology of six Lithuanian poets and I read it a few years ago but I reread this morning and yesterday just to you know refresh my memory and, and of course, White Shroud, because it's a very important book by Eskemas, sorry for pronunciation. And of course, scattered mm, text, poems, also like, for instance, the Spring Festival anthologies. Many of my students, or some of them, say, ah, I find Lithuanian poetry, Lithuanian literature boring, too pastoral, too rural, you know, so there is a lot of, a lot of that, you know, what I heard. This is not what I found in this in this book, of course, because maybe that's the point, like the poets collected here, um, basically having their debut collections after uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, or almost, you know, they are so like this very important historical uh, hallmark. There is the same sense of Western feeling that I, that actually, I mean, I, I feel like I relate with, mm, many of these poems because I think they are not far away from what um, what's the landscape of Italian uh, poetry in general like this um, presence I mean of course I, I should say that now maybe it's moving also to other directions but now I mean in the last 10 years but um, but it's it's true I think that over the last decades also like in Italy there has been this um, especially in Italy from the 80s um, but the eye sort of immersed in everyday situations, reflecting on them, sometimes using this ironic, uh, skeptical tone. And that's what we would say, like, also mainstream uh, Italian poetry, especially, I would say, of uh, authors born maybe in the 50s, 60s, you know. Now, now another thing that might be interesting to say is that when I think about size of the countries, and I think that Lithuania, in terms of size and number of inhabitants, would fit in any of the Italian regions, so any of the 20 Italian regions. So I, I, I realize that it's hard to, to talk about Italian literature, even though I am very much into that. I try to keep, um, you know, updates, especially in terms of poetry, what's being produced, because in Italy, course many regions many different centers so the poetry written in Milan and in Rome and in the provinces and in the south and in the north are quite often clashing very different actually even a reaction to the poetry written in other parts of the um, of the country so like I, I, I my imagine though I'm not sure that the situation is more homogeneous in Lithuania because of of you know matter of size and and also the fact that in that there is a centralized um a lithuanian union of you know writers which is something that we don't have uh, and i think it's something that we don't have in general in western countries that did not directly experience um soviet union even though italy was not so far from that because of as we know like a big uh, communist party and a lot a lot of um, a, a lot of that in the past, but however, um, we don't have a state funded body or a public funded body, and so everything is very scattered in Italy, it's scattered across publishing houses or circles. Um, and now, even those are dispersed because of the internet, because of social media, the situation is totally. Um, exploded out of control and um, I don't know if it's similar in Lithuania but my feeling was that uh, you know I've 
taken part in some initiatives, uh, one of which you, you invited me last year, and I thank you for that. And, and, and I feel that because the community is like smaller, it felt really like a community. I mean, I went to the, also to the Druskininke festival where this is very obvious because um, we were all of us like in one big place. Um, and also in the spring festival, traveling together. Uh, now I've been to Italian festivals super recently, so the same dynamics is there, but of course it's more dispersed because you have many festivals, many, and even there people complain, always the same people are invited. Now I don't know if that's the case in here as well, but I, I mean, I can spot faces that I see all the time, so I think that there is a pretty close-knit community here. I don't know how good is that because I am a bit of an outsider, not knowing the language that well. I imagine that like everything else, it has its pros and cons. Like on the one hand, um, you may help each other, translate each other, you know, because being together in a network um, is always good in terms of, you know, bringing some strengths together, make your voice heard. On the other hand, I'm afraid, but I don't know. As I said, I haven't tried widely. The risk in these dynamics, at least this is what happens in the Italian bubbles, is that you don't really stray uh, out of that bubble and you don't feel like criticizing, you don't, feel, you don't want to be cut off. So you really like try to be really careful what you say when you say that. It's, it's a shame, it's a problem, and it's also something that that I feel even for, for Italy, because sometimes I would like to be more spoken out. I mean, people say I am, but uh, I'm not. Like, I am censoring myself 90, you know, 90% of the time. Um, because, of course, the, the risk sometimes is always thinking, if you, if you say something not directly against that poet, but against someone who is protected by that poet, then in a few months time, years time, you will be rejected for the magazine, won't be invited to the festival. One should be at least, how to put it, like strong enough as to say, really, I don't care. I speak my mind and you know, whoever sees value in what I do will contact me. Maybe for me it would be a bit easier paradoxically because I'm a bit farther. So I keep this distance both from Italy and from Lithuania in Italy because of the distance, Lithuanian because of the language and culture. I feel like, um, like most in my life, I feel 20% part of everything. <laughs> so like I feel a bit part, but never whole. I mean, I never feel 100% belonging to anything. And that's maybe what I forgot to say is like, a key part of my poetry is about being uprooted completely. I never felt belonging to my hometown just to say one thing. Um, but I do feel in general very much belonging to Vilnius. But as for the specific poetry community, no, I am a casual visitor. You know, I am a bit like <laughs> Lindy Hop that I go dancing without being a very good dancer. But I know the people, I go there sometimes, I kind of dance. So I feel part of it, but not really deep. I found something I appreciate in all of them, but I feel extremely drawn into uh, Sigitas Parulskis. It's the only author that when I read years ago and even now, it moved me. And it not, almost never happens to me, but really be moved, you know. It's almost beyond when you say like, um, I would have liked to write this poem, it's just, okay, I, I trust it, I see someone who has done some deep thinking and going to the roots of things, and I may even maybe read one, one poem, I don't know if that's, um, maybe yeah, because it's a way to kind of show that. This is also almost obsessive, usually like, I think I don't, I don't like when the tones are too heavy, too underlined, but here there is something that rings true and you just go with it. So for instance, um, there is this poem, The Wall. Every morning I used to run to the Aviation Cemetery 
in order to scatter the fragments of dreams and unpleasant smells that collected overnight, gathered in my mouth and in that place in my body where I suspect the soul lies dormant. It was a strange cemetery, the Catholics, the godless and the Orthodox gathered at one end, at the other only Jews, though reading what was inscribed on the headstones, it's hard to believe that for them the Torah was life's most important book. One day the cemetery was divided by hideous concrete wall block, block wall. I like cemeteries. The fear of death encourages one to get to know it all the more intimately and not to run away. When the wall appeared, I began to avoid visiting there. The dead that don't speak to each other are more appalling than the living who strangle one another. And it's that feeling of directness and punchiness, uh, almost like something bare um, and very direct. Here there is no irony. There is this honesty, but there's also some insights. You know, the fear of death encourages one to get to know it all the more intimately. And also like, um, yeah, the, the, the free verse makes, which is uh, typical like in the whole um, anthology, but it backgrounds the form. And I like this, I like a form which is a bit in the background because I like contents. <laughs> I like contents to be put in the foreground. I don't like word plays. I don't like um, shows of erudition. I like something that speaks to something deep archetypal, but I don't like things that are esoteric. Here, for instance, like references to religions are really like, um, how to put it, um, set in something physical, like a cemetery. There is a wall that was built and before was not there. So there is a reference to um, urban planning, which is also like a form of civilization or lack of civilization. In a way, I also like Gintaras Goryauskas. I mean, it's a much more lighthearted manner, but sometimes I think one needs this um, sort of slant view on reality. And of course, when I say I like these poets, it's because I think what I have written or what I intend to write, or you know, the kind of moods that I that I capture. So in the case of Paruski's was like this being direct and full of wisdom that I like. Here in Garoyaskas, even though it was not mo it was moving more for the intellect than the heart, but I like this kind of I wouldn't say no non nonsense, but this playful attitude which is intelligent at the same time. For instance, I'm gonna read one poem, The Little Buddha. It's always like this. Without rhyme or reason, they start shouting. Then they sort of make peace with something, fall silent and look a long while into different corners. Until again, without rhyme or reason, they start up again. And then I blurt out whatever comes into my head, even louder. Tomorrow will be cloudy with bright intervals. They're shocked start looking at one another, a madhouse, someone says. But what more can I do, me? A little portable radio of the class of 66. So the final twist sounds almost like a, a joke, which is not um, to despise it. I mean, there is a, um, the, the punchline. I mean, the same, on the one hand, humoristic structure that one finds in jokes that you know is also like a pleasure for the intellect because another uh, tradition of poetry that I like or in which I feel comfortable is uh, the, the wit. The idea of okay that you know that might be metaphysical or not but it totally makes sense it's actually shrewd it's almost like humorous because of too much intelligence so like um, even to a reader of poetry where a lot of poems may not occur that the speaker might be a radio and you only find out at the, at the end. I also like this sort of 
low-key epiphany which a bit of humor I've written something like that now I feel a bit distant sometimes because I feel that there might be complacency in that I mean there might be complacency in everything also like in being wise uh, which is by the way why I like to an extent try to change if not the style but you know to have a form that is flexible enough not resting too long in one attitude that's important to me I remember older generation um, of poets having poets in quatrains and rhymes and younger generation in totally free verse and <laughs> I dislike both extremes <laughs> um, I mean but especially now that kind of free verse that is lazy because free verse is really difficult to do and it's obvious that when you write in free verse the rhythm can be easily destroyed especially in translation but what I don't like is yeah when there is this feeling which is not freedom it's simply like laziness of execution you know a free verse should be hyper rhythmical in my opinion so this I don't like and also what I don't like and sometimes to be honest I also find in this anthology but I find it in general but I think it's an interesting point is where the poems don't change their pronouns too often because that for me like is a sort of indication that it's really self-reflective you know if you're writing about yourself and there is only I is this sort of monologue and it's it's a bit too inward only uh, one of the poems that I haven't read by Parulski has got him and the mouse so there is a dialectic with something else um, but also if a poem uses we is also the same like because this we doesn't get into any um, relationship with known we so I like poems that are polyphonic in the sense that they vary the viewpoints so in, that's that's why I like you know even though I don't write fiction but I like the idea of fiction that you get contrasting viewpoint clashing into one another so I try to do that condensing that in a poem as a small dramatic space and sometimes many poems they seem to flat to me they start and that they end in the same way and they have the same mindset uh, from start to end and even like from poem to poem to poem like monolithic view and that's very typical also in much Italian poetry and sometimes I think it's regarded as um, as something good you know you know your way but to me it's a bit like narrow like you're not open enough to reality that you don't allow your verse to shape around the situations that are always changing but quite a few poems even by different authors that I've seen here and also many poets uh, in in Italy well including myself sometimes we have this subgenre which is a self, the, the poem about poetry you know the meta poem almost always I don't like it I mean of course there are some cases in which the execution is very intelligent or doesn't bother me but in general what I don't like is uh, is a bit like you know the songs in the disco that are about dancing of course it's about dancing because you're in the disco but but that's a pop you know and it's too self-referential the poet is reminded about himself as a poet and is writing that he's writing a poem doesn't matter if it's ironic towards that because irony is also a way to save that last remnant um, you know if one is really generous one uses poem as a medium not as an end and not even as a theme I mean I don't manage myself all the time because of course it's part of one's life but I don't like when it becomes almost an obsessive theme because how about other people who really don't they already don't care about poetry so why they should care about a poetry that is about poetry or is about language to be honest the only Lithuanian novel that I remember having read is this one White Shroud I appreciated the variety of tone this um, maybe ironic absurdist bent but at the same time didn't speak to me too much and I wonder whether that's because 
well maybe of course haven't tried many books like that before that which you know might be also like a, a, a compliment like it's not something I think it's very common to find say in Italian literature I mean of course there is Italian literature written by uh, migrants but it's sort of a niche and it's not mainstream and I haven't read it I mean I am used to this slight estrangement of going to other places but I think that now what the problem is well problem we are in globalization so maybe we feel that clash much less than we used to so this feels felt a bit dated to me yeah maybe it didn't resonate with me for, for some reason like it was maybe too obvious uh, this repetition this scene of the elevator uh, too much I mean it was too hyperbolic I think it, it's a book that I may have liked 10 15 years ago but um, not now any longer well I feel I'm more attracted to the I mean, it was tragic, even without the humor. I mean, I, I liked the, the, the tragic emerging more clearly. Another thing that I really didn't uh, align myself with in that book was the uh, obsession, even, even though maybe taken with a bit of irony, but of being, I don't know if a romantic poet or he, he went to these woods, maybe he killed himself or he tried to, yeah. and, and that and that felt teenage to me and I really like I'm trying to flew teenage writing and also liking myself as much as I as I can another reason why I don't like um, the idea of write, think, writing as if you were a poet I think we should write as if we are human beings and the height as they write as if they are just creatures you know even maybe without species distinction so that's, um, yeah, that's my point, say the last point maybe of the interview.